A quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Brandon Ballinger has two big passions, art and bugs. So how does the visual artist and biologist combine these two loves? By building art installations equipped with lights to attract bugs, of course. Brandon is a visual artist, biologist, and environmental educator whose nature-inspired artworks are raising awareness of the human impact on the environment and garnering international acclaim. These love motels for insects are scattered across the globe, helping raise awareness of the human impact on the environment and his beloved bugs. I'm both an artist and a biologist. As a biologist, I'm a frog guy working in the fish lab at Louisiana State University. As an artist, I'm constantly inspired by nature. And as an environmental advocate, I want my art and science to get other folks thrilled about the diversity of life on this tiny, wonderful planet, even bugs. So many years ago, I asked myself how we might be able to combine art with science to get other folks to not only know about insects, but maybe care about them, maybe even actually help them. That's when I came up with the idea of the love motel for insects. <laughs> yes, you heard that correctly. A love motel for insects. Here, I began creating large outdoor sculptures that use ultraviolet lights to attract insects. The insects come, they meet other insects, <laughs> they make more insects, and I invite people to watch. <laughs> really, so I, I guess this makes this a kind of PG-13 kind of talk. <laughs> In all seriousness, insects and arthropods have eyes that are very different than our own. They see a much higher spectrum of ultraviolet light than we do. So by putting UV lights on a white background, it's like creating a full moon event for them. By embedding these lights into large outdoor sculpture that then glow in the dark, I'm able to attract insects, but also people, making this a kind of trans-species public art. <laughs> From an aesthetic standpoint, my early insect love motels reference minimalist sculpture, such as large, simple glowing forms, or giant blank canvases, often responding to the landscape or the site itself. Over time, these evolved into interventions into architecture, such as at this historic monastery in the Netherlands, or artistic reactions to pre-existing structures, like these train cars in a city park in Laramie, Wyoming. In addition, as sculpture, sometimes the work have become inspired by the natural design of the insects themselves, like these dragonfly wings that were exhibited at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., and later, in Central Park in New York City, or the microscopic scales that cover the wings of moths and butterflies, or the moths themselves, like this luna moth that lives in the South Bronx in New York City, or this tiger swallowtail that resides in Charlotte, North Carolina. However, unlike most minimalist sculpture, the Love Motel for Insects create a system of events or means by which to catalyze actions by which humans may not only learn about insects, but maybe even actually help them. For example, in South Korea, my sculpture became an arthropod study unit, whereby working with local biologists, we documented dozens of different types of insects. We even discovered two species that had not previously been described in the Korean peninsula before. So the love motels for insects create an opportunity for scientists, but also, importantly, a means for non-specialists to contribute to science through their observations. Or recently, in Utah, where after uh, we're using an online platform, hundreds of citizen scientist observations were made as the love motel for insects traveled around the Great Salt Lake region. There's also been bug stock and ecopalooza, At these events, folks can celebrate their local nature and also create art. 
even the insects create art. <laughs> By coming and marking the sculpture with pheromones and other entochemicals. You see, many species of bugs communicate through these beetle juices. And by painting the sculpture, it helps them attract a mate. One could call this arthropod expressionism, <laughs> or maybe an insect dating service. In all seriousness, all of these trans species happenings create situations for people to learn about their local nature, celebrate it,、uh, contribute to science, express their findings through art, and even take direct positive ecological actions to benefit not only insects but other species. We're in the middle of this mass extinction crisis, where huge amounts of organisms have disappeared within our lifetimes, and the question I always ask myself is, who can save biodiversity? Will it be artists? Will it be scientists? Will it be governments? I would say it's every single one of us, and by using the creative. Side of art, science, and just being individual human beings working together, we have this remarkable ability to restore environments and help other species. Life wants to persist if we let it, which in turn helps us too. So I invite you all to be creative.、Right? Love nature, right? And love insects. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx LSU. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Visit our website at ted.com/tedxshorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening, and see you tomorrow.